Day five. The fifth day of the adventure of a lifetime. Hey, someone's making a mess. Daddy! Is that you? Oh my god, it's snowing. Are you upstairs? Betty, I'm coming. Betty? Hey, this is the locked room. Are you in there? Open the door. God I'm damn it, Betty. Stand away from the door. And where can I do this before? Why do I have to do all this other stuff? Now I can just break through the door. Oh. Ready? No. No, 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 no. Oh. It was you, Betty. But who? Anna. You don't even show remorse for a dead body sitting in front of you, bro. You're like a terrible person, bro. You said this was a gift from another unlucky suitor. Precious to you. You wouldn't have left it here unless a signpost, a breadcrumb. <laughs> but what's so important about the Fretlands? I will figure this out. You know, people don't normally just I leave find you bread crumbs. Breadcrumbs. So, dude, I think she just. She, I think they killed her. And they're just like, ha, taking all your stuff. It's from Johan. Addressed to his wife. Did you notice the handwriting, Betty? He was clearly distraught. Knock, er, knock. Enough is enough. After decades of strife, I pray that God will... Tilly, forgive me. I am tired of secrets. For 20 years, I have kept my silence about our discovery. But my silence has only led to misfortune. Cowardice has only led to death. I will make Frederick pay for what he has done to us, for what they have done to our Ruth. When it is over, I will let the ocean take me to you and Ruth. May God forgive me. And I was already dead when he wrote this. He had no one else to confess to. What now, Betty? Johan went to confront his brother, probably at Frederick's farm. And then. Then we can only imagine what happened. Follow Johan to Frederick Fretland's farm, and then to the mine. You wouldn't let this go, Betty. You'd follow your story to the end. All the way to the end. Alright, so we're gonna go check out this farm. If it lets us. Yeah. So where is Frederick's farm? The gate. Frederick's warning. The path leads to his farm. The farm is on the way to the mine, isn't that so, Betty? Are 
you still at the farm? Or did you go all the way to the mine? I need to see what you saw. Follow your story. The red thread you left for me. I keep I like the red thread analogy. It's the studio that made the game. It's pretty nice. I'm on my way, Betty. So where is Frederick's farm? The eeriness of like the snow and the fogs makes this like journey to the gate so much better. Oh, we got a raven. What led you to this place? Oh, well, now you're fine, trespassing. All these fragments. You would piece them together into a story, wouldn't you, Betty? So, what do we know? Johan and Frederick are partners. <laughs> and on good terms. Something happens in the mine. Disagreements lead to a falling out. And at the end of it all, 20 years later, Johan walks this path to confront Frederick. Interesting. Oh, did he... he burned his house down. Doing, Johan? Did you burn your brother's farm to the ground? And where were you, Betty? Did you witness their fall? Definitely burned it down. What do you reckon, Betty? find the uh, combination in the wreckage somewhere around here yeah, let's see if we can get a different let's try it again for good measure Jesus, it's so dark in here. Simon's grave. Born December 5th, 1909. Died September 17th, 1923. A safe. Frederick would choose numbers that meant something to him. Why bury Simon here, not at the cemetery? If the village blamed him for Ruth's death, I could really use your imagination, Betty. You'd figure this out in no time. Margaret Fretland. She died 5 12, 1909. That was the day he was born, so she may have died in, during birth. Giving birth to Simon. I have to go all the way around. Sorry if I sound a little sick, guys. A bit 
Sick. Let's try Simon's birthday. Hey. Another Viking artifact, Betty. Most likely from the same treasure Ruth found. Postmarked in Boston. That's a curious coincidence. Dear Frederick, I hope this letter. It's in English, Betty. Hope this letter finds you and the boy in good health. We're concerned about you both. No word from you for almost two years now. All of us still heartbroken about Margaret's passing. We know things have been difficult for you and Simon. Mr. Fretland, we expect you to take care of this problem. If the discovery is made public, the authorities will intervene and the mine will be shut down. Should this happen, we will consider it a breach of our contract and we will withdraw our investment. You and your brother will be responsible for all debts and losses. Johan must be convinced to wall up the chamber. We've already dealt with the worker who made the discovery. Something about that Viking treasure, I bet. Mining company. I wonder what this unlocks. Something important. You went to the mine. I hope our guardian angel watched over you. All right, Petty. So what happens next in your story? Johan and Frederick discover something in the mine. A cave or chamber of archaeological value. They argue about what to do. The discovery is made public. It's the end of their enterprise. Johan is convinced or paid to walk away. Their secret stays hidden. Then, a few months later, the accident. Three men die. The investors pull out. The mine shuts down. Frederick's up to his neck in debt. It's quite the predicament. I'm just gonna straight up climb through the window. All right. So, twenty years pass. Frontland feud tears the village apart, setting neighbor against neighbor. I picked the curse, what? And then, Ruth stumbles across the secret in the mine. After all this time, the truth may finally come to light, but she dies. And the day after, Simon is murdered. Simon knew it's about the thing. Old grievances resurface. No matter who you stand with, you're a traitor. Things escalate. More people die. From disease, despair, suicide, murder. All because of the mine. Because of what they found there. And what they covered up. There was no one to stop it, Betty. They were alone. That's the real curse of Grovik. Isolation. Here's the mine. The dreaded place of all the problems for Grovik. This place is cursed. It's definitely giving that eerie feeling, that's for sure. Oh, that's that's creepy. <laughs> Ruth was here the day she fell. So 
Something spooked her. <laughs> she ran. All the way to the cliff where... Do you know what happened, Betty? Did you witness it? I feel like so she found something. Someone snatched her and threw her off the, threw her off the cliff so she couldn't say anything. Just have that eerie feeling like Whoa. that's what happened. Betty, are you in there? Some type of murder mystery Please there. Dude, why would Betty just be in the cave? You've already been here for five days. <laughs> this is pretty eerie, to be honest. Climbed through the hole <laughs> and it fell off. Oh shit. <laughs> oh god, that scared me. Oh no. Get out of here, bud. Betty was in there. She ain't coming out. Edward. What? Edward. What the hell? <laughs> Elizabeth? Is that? Edward? I'm here, Betty. Where it's are Edward. You? It's... I'm on my way, Betty. Wait for me. <laughs> what? I'm so confused. So just randomly. Like a cave collapses and she starts screaming. I can hear you. What? I'm almost there. I'm so confused. Edward, where are you? Stay put, Betty. I'm on my way. Betty? Edward, please. I'm coming, Betty. Oh, how's her voice so clear? We're all the way in the mountains. <laughs> this is not real. <laughs> There's Betty, no way. I'm almost there. Elizabeth? Stay put. I'm on my way. Edward. Don't move. I'm coming for you. She's inside. I could hear from the mountains. <laughs> Edward, is that you? I'm in here. Well, you couldn't have met me outside. Thank God. You're around the corner. Elizabeth, there you are. What? Finally. <laughs> you have no idea how long I've been looking for you. You, you had me so worried. I, I, I. What? No. <laughs> Look, your brooch, mother's brooch. You, you must have lost it at the mine. Uh, let me put it on for you, Betty. I wouldn't want you to lose it again. 
Oh. The curse. She's been dead for 30 years, Edward. Elizabeth was never here. But we didn't come for her. We came for Johan, and Anna, and Frederick, and Simon, and... Jeez. We're here to tell their stories. No. Elizabeth. She's here. I... You know Betty died when she was a baby. She drowned in the pond. And you found her. You were just 11. You carried her to your mother. And your mother... She hated you for that. She could never forgive you for bringing her baby to her. And you could never forgive yourself for what she did after. You always forget this. Because you don't want to be alone. So you bring Betty back. Again again to New York to Boston to the house but always just out of reach never quite there the scent of her the echo of her but never really her and all it does is make you lonelier but the thing is Edward you're never alone you have us. And you'll always have us. Betty's... She was never there for you. She couldn't be. You can't lose us. We're a part of you. Forever. And ever. And ever. But you need to let Betty go now. There's not room for all of us in there. I couldn't save you, Elizabeth. I'm so sorry. To my biggest fan of best wishes, Greta is as painful to wake from a vision Caitlin. as it is to be born anew. <laughs> 